If you didn't know by now, Svelte is an amazing framework. It rallied a very enthusiastic community around it and is changing ideas we believe to be the norm in modern front-end development. However, the Svelte team didn't stop here. They came up with Svelte Kit, a framework on top of Svelte, which offers a beautiful dev experience, powerful routing, server-side rendering and crazy fast load times. To give you a bit of context, I've been involved in front-end development for more than 10 years and I'm mostly a React guy. A few weeks back, I started to look at Svelte as an alternative and I got hooked. In this video, I'll take things a step forward and I'll build a more complex app using all the great things Svelte Kit has to offer. Setting things up is fast and straightforward so I'll not get into it. Follow the four steps mentioned on their website and we are ready to go. Don't get discouraged by the large number of config files you'll see in the root directory. I agree it looks pretty terrible but in most cases you'll never need to touch this stuff so don't worry about it too much. It's worth mentioning though that the project is using Vite as a build tool and comes with TypeScript support out of the box. You can also integrate your code with Prettier which has VS Code support and will auto format your code on every file save. I'll start by adding the directory structure I'll need inside the source folder and hopefully the names are pretty self-explanatory. A more interesting fact here is that Svelte Kit comes with a special folder called routes. The framework uses a concept called file system routing, so the file names defined in this folder will determine the path the route will handle. This is a fairly common approach in frameworks offering server-side rendering and we'll look into this at length in the following minutes. A special file we can define inside the routes folder is called layout.svelte. Any app will have some part of the layout shared between different views. The usual example here is either the app header or the app footer. Svelte Kit will know to pick up this special file and combine it with the file the user actually wants to see. Note the use of the slot element. This lets the framework know where the content needs to be inserted in the layout. With this quick example out of the way, it's time now to write some real code in the layout file. Since this code will run every time a page is rendered in the browser, this is a good spot to add not only shared UI but also shared behavior. To emphasize this, I'm going to use the special Svelte head tag to load some Google fonts in the page. As a side note, you could also do this in the app.html file. For now, I'll define a simple HTML structure with a common header and a common footer. This might be independent components since at least the app header tends to grow in size and complexity over time. I will not get into details when it comes to styling. You can check out my take on CSS in a video I'm linking in the description. The only thing I'm going to mention though is that Svelte offers SAS support in a straightforward manner as long as you have the npm SAS and node SAS packages installed in your project. Ok, so the app header will have a search box that allows us to look up movies and the drop down allowing us to see our movie lists. I'm wrapping the content in a component called container to easily handle dimensions and viewports later if needed. Let's quickly go through the basics of Svelte components. In the script tag I'm going to export a flex variable which means that this could be passed as a property from a parent component. Then based on this property we'll conditionally assign a class to the container element. The CSS rules are pretty basic. I'm just making sure the content is aligned to the center of the screen. Jumping to the search box component I'm going to add here a basic input field and register a non-key app handler function. The idea is to trigger a search whenever the user presses the enter key. In a real project you would probably do this in an async manner and also provide some search suggestions based on the user input. In this case however I want to perform the search on the server. On one hand it'll give us the chance to look at some other Svelte Kit cool features and on the other hand this approach allows us to have an SEO friendly search results page. With correct URLs Google would be able to index quite a lot of your content via search page such as this. I mentioned earlier that routing in Svelte Kit uses a file system approach. To handle our search request, I'll create a search folder. Inside it, I'm creating a Svelte file with the key string between brackets. The framework will know to extract the value between the brackets in a page parameter called key. Notice that the page variable is actually a Svelte store, so we'll use the dollar sign to auto subscribe to the store value. This type of subscription allows us to work with values without the need to unsubscribe when the user leaves the page or the component is unmounted. Now it's time to mention another important Svelte concept, endpoints. These are modules written in TypeScript files that export request handler functions corresponding to HTTP methods. In short, you can return functions named get, post, put or delete for instance. These functions will run server side and will return back an object response containing a status, some headers and a body. Note that I'm skipping over some of the implementation since it has nothing to do with the topic we are discussing. I cut out from this video things like writing DTOs or fetch calls to third party APIs, but you can find a detailed look into these topics in the video I'm linking in the top 
top right corner. Also, the project is available in GitHub, so check out the description for that. As an FYI, Svelkit is built on top of the standard web APIs, so you can reliably use things such as the fetch API, streams, or the URL API. In the movie API file, I'm making various fetch calls to a small public API I built for testing purposes. This is available on the website, so feel free to use this as well if you'd like to. Getting back to our code, notice that we defined the movie property for the search page. Since we also defined the page endpoint with the same name as the Svelte component, and that endpoint returns a property called movies in the response body, the framework knows to the endpoint to the page and to populate the page properties with the information from the response. So, our search component and our search endpoint will be automatically matched and the data from the response body will populate the component state. I am rendering the received movies using a key each block and I am registering an event handler for the onclick event. We'll work more on this implementation in a second. First, let's take a look at what we have so far. I am able to enter a search key in the search box and, by pressing enter, a results page is rendered. Understand that this scenario does a whole round trip to the server and back. So, the search endpoint is triggered, the results are retrieved from the third-party API, and then the component is first rendered on the server. It is then sent as plain HTML to the client. To ensure that your page is interactive, Svelkit will render the component again on the browser in a process called hydration. This approach offers you the best of both worlds, full interactivity and fast SEO-friendly HTML responses. You'll notice that there is a bit of redundancy though, since the rendering happens twice. As an FYI, there are other ideas out there like the islands architecture aim to solve this in a more efficient manner. Next, we'll work on creating list entities. We'll need a new page and an endpoint for that. The Movies API expects a unique member ID in the header of each request to pair the created list with a user entity. I'm getting such a unique ID by making an init call to the API in the onMount lifecycle hook of the layout file. We'll store the ID in the local storage since we'll need it later. Remember that SvelteKit runs both on the front-end and in a node backend server. This means that, on the server, you will not have access to the local storage, which is exclusively a browser feature. The only way to access the unique ID on the backend is to pass it over in a request header or in the request body. So you always have to think about your code and make sure it is working as you are expecting to, even if you don't have access to things like the browser window object. The init endpoint will also return an array of movie lists associated with the user making the request. I will save that info in a Svelte writable store. The store is Svelte's solution to address the state management problem and it offers a lot of flexibility and powerful features. In short, we are ending up with a centralized point where app data can be reliably saved and accessed from anywhere in the application. If you don't want to use the store, data needs to be passed between components as properties, which can turn out to be quite boilerplate when you have a deeply nested tree of components. I will continue by adding a file called new.svelte in the routes list directory. As we recall, this will automatically create a request handler for the slash list slash new path. There isn't anything fancy about this component. I'm creating an HTML form with a couple of inputs, which will be sent via POST request back to the node server. As I mentioned earlier, the server doesn't have access to the local storage, so I'm also sending the unique member ID as an input hidden field. I'm fetching the ID from the local storage when the component is mounted in the DOM, and now we are ready to jump into the endpoint associated with this component. We've seen this in practice with the search get functionality, but our file will now export a handler function called POST. So, in a new file called new.ts, I'm defining a function which receives a request event parameter. I'm then extracting the data received in the request body using a custom getParams function and I'm performing some basic validation. Of course, validating user input should be performed thoroughly, but in this case I only want to outline the option of sending different response statuses back to the client. We'll later look into how to display custom error messages when errors are received from the server. There are two more updates I want to go through quickly. Remember that all this code is in GitHub as well. The app header also contains a list dropdown component which basically allows you to preview your existing movie lists or create a new one if needed. The implementation of this component is extremely straightforward. I'm iterating over the list store object we defined earlier and I'm linking them to a details page using a simple HTML link element. We'll work on the list details page in a second. The second change is in the index.svelte component where I'm iterating through the same list store object and displaying the information for demo purposes in the DOM. The results so far are pretty good. We are now able to create list objects using our form and the created lists are displayed on the home page. The final piece of the puzzle is allowing users to add movies to their lists. We'll do this in an async manner by calling the third-party API directly from the front-end. I'm creating a component called addMovieModel where we'll do the implementation. 
When the user clicks on one of the movies from the search results page, the movie will be passed down to the model as a property. As you know, Svel components can communicate and pass information to their parents by dispatching events. We'll do just that to allow the parent component to close the model if needed. Finally, the add movie to list implementation is straightforward. We'll make the call to the movie API and we'll send over the member ID from the local storage, the list and the movie ID selected by the user. There isn't anything special about the template part of the component. Again, iterating over the store values and triggering the add movie to list handler when the user clicks on one of the list names. In the search movies component, we are going to display the model if the user clicks on a movie and, as I said, pass the active movie to the model for displaying purposes. If the user decides to close the model, we'll simply set the active movie to null, which will trigger the removal of the component from the DOM. I mentioned that we'll also look at custom error pages. To give this a bit of context, we'll implement a list detail page. If the list was created with the is public flag set to true, we'll display the list details. Otherwise, we'll return a 404 error response. The details page will be exposed at a slash list slash list ID path, so I'll create a Svelte component with a name to match the IDs. In the template, we'll simply render the list name and the list of movies associated with this object. Our component needs to receive the list object as a property, so, of course, we'll need to create a page endpoint to populate the property. Again, nothing too fancy about this. We'll expose the get function and we'll make a movie API fetch call. If the status is the right one, the list object is added to the response body. Going back to the browser, I created two separate lists. We can reach them directly via the URL. The public one shows the associated movie movies, while the private one returns a 404. In the routes folder, I'll create a new Svelte component called error. The framework will know to render the content of this component whenever an error response comes from the server. Of course, you can address errors individually and create different pages for a 500 server error compared to a 404 not found, for instance. And this sums up the first dive into Svelte kit. I for one am not able to find too many negative points about the Svelte ecosystem at the moment. However, I leave it to you to decide if what you've seen is a better dev experience than what the framework you are currently using is offering. If you've made it this far, please consider adding a comment, liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching.